Hello students, let us continue our uh, discussion on the different types of geosynthetics and their applications. Just to briefly recap the previous lecture, we have discussed the brief introduction of uh, the geosynthetics and the concept of reinforced soil and the need for geosynthetics and we have seen the historical background, the early applications of the geosynthetics and uh, the different functions of uh, geosynthetics and the types of geosynthetics. And um, in the, this lecture is a continuation of the, the discussion on the types of geosynthetics. And in the previous lecture, we have already discussed the, the two types of geosynthetics. One is a geotextile and the other is a geogrid. And let us continue discussing the, about the other types of uh, geosynthetics. The geonets, these are um, also planar products and they are um, very similar to, um, to uh, geogrids and they also consist of ribs in two directions. But their aperture openings, they are not square or rectangular in shape, but they are more of diamond shaped. And um, the other major difference between a geonet and the geogrid is that the ribs in the two directions are there in two different planes. Say for example, uh, the geonet, uh, there are uh, ribs in two different directions, they are in two different planes. Whereas in a geogrid, both of them are in the same plane and the thickness of a geonet is much larger than that of a geogrid because the function of a, a geonet is a very much different from that of the, the geogrid. And uh, sometimes uh, these geonets, they are also called as uh, geospaces because we want to create, uh, we need to um, create some space in some situations so that uh, there is a flow of, uh, free flow of water or, a, or for some other um, uh, purposes. And uh, this uh, slide, it shows uh, typical um, geonets and we see that the ribs um, are, in, um, are um, in two different planes and, uh, and then the thickness of each of these ribs is very large compared to that of a um, geogrid. And uh, here you see the, um, the close up of the same thing, the ribs in two different directions and the aperture openings, they are more of diamond shaped and not square or rectangular. These geonet applications, they are mainly used um, for erosion control because um, these ribs, because they are very thick, they act as small check dams to slow down uh, the surface runoff. And, um, and once the rainwater uh, surface runoff is slowed down, it reduces the erosion potential of the water and thereby um, reduce the surface erosion of the soil. And uh, the geonets can also be used as excellent drainage layers because, um, <coughs> because of the thickness of the geonet, uh, the soil in between uh, the small um, diamond shaped um, openings is not very highly compacted and because of that there is some flow path for the water to flow uh, through the geonet. Here is a good application of a geonet. It's actually, this uh, geonet is made of uh, polymeric rope and uh, this is called as a boulder net and this is used in the Konkan Railway in the Western Ghats. And the main function of this uh, geonet is uh, to act as a boulder and uh, as a guide for the loose boulders so that um, these um, loose boulders, they do not fall into the railway track because most of the Konkan Railway is uh, formed by cutting very deep gorges and uh, the train passes through a very narrow gorge and uh, when the boulders come loose during the heavy rainfall, the boulders come directly, uh, they fall into the railway track and because of that, there were uh, several um, accidents over the past few years and you would have also read some newspaper reports or in the TV reports about uh, the train accidents taking place on the Konkan Railway because of the fall of the boulders. And the purpose of these, um, these boulder nets is to guide these loose boulders to fall into a trap 
that is um, that is on both sides of the railway track and um, in in a indirect manner they also um, um, help in the growth of vegetation on these slopes and here we see in this slide you see the laying of the boulder net um, on these uh, cuts and on the right hand side you can see the growth of vegetation after about um, two seasons and these two slides are the courtesy of um, Mrs. Garvire wall ropes and uh, this is how uh, we anchor the, the rope net on top of the, um, on top of the slope is actually there is a 1 meter uh, deep trench and uh, which is uh, 0.5 meters wide and it is uh, the, uh, the rope net is anchored in the trench and the size of the trench um, especially the depth of the trench and the width they are decided based on the amount of tension that is likely to be developed based on the, the size of the boulders that are prevalent at this particular place and here you see the railway track going through a very narrow gorge and um, this is one typical application of a, of a boulder net or a rope net um, in um, Konkan railway. The other uh, geosynthetic product um, is a geomembrane which is um, very commonly used for construction of, um, of um, landfills or for lining the canals or for lining uh, some other water retaining structures. And these um, uh, geomembranes, these are nothing but thick impervious plastic sheets and typically they are, um, um, uh, their thickness can vary anywhere from 0.5 millimeters to almost 3 millimeters and uh, these geomembranes are used to contain liquids or the gases and there are several varieties of geo, um, uh, geomembranes on the left hand side we have a geomembrane with a rough texture whereas on the right hand side we have a very smooth uh, geomembrane and depending on the necessity we may use a smooth geomembrane or a very rough geomembrane. And some of the applications of the geomembranes they are um, used in landfill linings and they can be used as canal lining materials or they can uh, be used in the tunnels uh, to prevent the rainwater uh, from um, flowing through the tunnel or to prevent the moisture from coming into the tunnel. And here uh, we see the lining of a landfill uh, with, um, uh, with, a geo, uh, with a geomembrane. The main purpose is if there is a hazardous waste or a toxic waste, the, uh, um, this, uh, the product of this, um, this uh, toxic waste, they will not flow through the, uh, the, um, the, um, um, the landfill and, and contaminate the ground water. And here we see the application of a geomembrane for canal lining and um, here we see this um, uh, the geomembrane that is uh, lined on the canal and the geomembrane itself is protected by, uh, by concrete panels on the top so that the geomembrane is not directly exposed to the sun because all these uh, polymeric products they have um, uh, they get degraded because of the exposure to light and, um, and the heat that is the sun and the geomembrane that is uh, lined up that is um, anchored at the top use, um, using an anchor trench. And here uh, we see the application of a, of a, um, a geomembrane for uh, canal lining to prevent the moisture uh, um, from seeping into the, in, into the inside of the tunnel. And another um, uh, major application of the, of the geosynthetics is in the form of a prefabricated vertical drain that is used for accelerating the consolidation of um, soft soils. It is actually on the left hand side I have given um, uh, the equation for the time factor is a function of the coefficient of consolidation and the drainage path length d and then the time t and we know that the time t is uh, directly proportional to the square of the drainage path length and uh, of course the time factor and inversely proportional to the, uh, to the coefficient of consolidation. And uh, here the only parameter that we can change uh, so that we, we have a reduced time for consolidation is the drainage path length d 
because the soil properties we cannot change and then the TV is the time factor that is related to the degree of consolidation that we want to achieve and if you are able to reduce the drainage path length D by a factor of 2, the time for consolidation will reduce by a factor of 4 because of the um, because um, the time is directly proportional to the square of the drainage path length and um, here is a typical um, um, manner in which we can apply the uh, these uh, drains and let us say that uh, we have a thick um, clay soil and um, if you do not put in anything the water has to travel this much length to escape from the soil and uh, it takes a very long time to consolidate the soil. On the other hand if you introduce some highly permeable um, uh, members either sand columns or the prefabricated vertical drains and the length of the drainage path uh, so that the water can escape from the soil is very, very small. In this particular case if the water particle travels the small distance it can enter into this uh, highly pervious uh, column either uh, sand column or a prefabricated vertical drain and once it, uh, uh, once it enters this um, drainage medium it can escape very fast and that is the principle of the pre, the, uh, the pre consolidation. Somehow we reduce the flow path length so that our the time for consolidation is reduced and in the early days uh, the sand was used for uh, constructing these, uh, these drains and uh, we all know what are the problems that are associated with the, uh, with the sand columns. They can get contaminated by the soft clay or uh, if there are um, um, some differential movements inside the ground the efficiency of the sand columns will reduce tremendously and to, um, and to overcome all these problems we have come out with prefabricated vertical drains <coughs> and in cross section a prefabricated vertical drain consists of an outer core of a geotextile that acts as a filter and there is an inner core that acts like the drainage medium and this inner core uh, could be made of um, um, in the simple um, uh, PVDs it could be just a corrugated uh, plastic sheet plastic core or um, in more complicated systems we could have a, a geonet, um, geonet in as a core and on the outside we could have a thick um, geotextile that acts as a filter. The concept is like this, see we introduce the prefabricated vertical drain into the ground by pushing it, uh, by attaching it to some, uh, some anchor, um, anchors like this and then we just simply push it and then, um, and then um, allow the water to come out and here we see a schematic illustration of the water flowing through the, uh, the geotextile filter and once it enters the core because the core is a highly permeable the water comes out very fast. And here we see the application of um, prefabricated vertical drains at a construction site with a very soft, um, soft clay subgrade, soft clay foundation soil and here we see uh, some PVDs that are already um, already installed and here we see these two people attaching the, the PVD to an anchor, um, anchor plate. So actually here um, we see this um, another view of the same thing and um, once um, the entire uh, ground is uh, uh, treated with um, prefabricated vertical drains we can apply some surcharge on this on this soil and the amount of surcharge that we apply should be corresponding to the expected uh, foundation pressures that we have after the, um, after the full construction takes place. Another uh, product, um, geosynthetic product that we have is a geosynthetic clay liner. So actually this uh, geosynthetic clay liner is an additional um, uh, protection member that we can, uh, that we have in the, in the landfills. And these uh, GCLs uh, they consist of a core of a bentonite clay that is sandwiched between uh, two layers of uh, thick non-woven geotextiles and uh, this is applied below 
uh, and above the geomembrane in land in a landfill and uh, the um, and because of the provision of this uh, GCL there could be a self repair mechanism because for example when there is a um, when there is some damage to uh, to a geomembrane the fluid starts flowing and once the fluid uh, starts flowing it comes in contact with the dry bentonite powder that is placed in a in a geosynthetic clay liner that is the GCL and you know that once the uh, the bentonite um, uh, clay uh, comes in contact with water it expands once it swells it can close the uh, it can close the um, the opening because of this expansion and that we call as uh, the self repair mechanism and it can close the gaps that are uh, caused because of damage in the geomembrane and uh, schematically uh, a GCL is uh, something like this we have a core of um, dry bentonite powder that is uh, sandwiched between two thick geotextile layers and the right hand side we see a product of the GCL is actually it is um, the same thing um, as shown on the left hand side we have um, a thick uh, geotextile layer and um, and the inside we have the uh, the bentonite powder <coughs> the geo cell is uh, different from all the other products all the other products that we have seen they are all uh, planar products uh, that is um, they can provide uh, reinforcement action or uh, they can act as a separator or they can act as a filter whereas a geo cell it has um, a three dimensional um, effect on the soil it can provide some confinement because it has number of openings is actually this uh, geo cell it is uh, more of a honeycomb structure wherein we take uh, thin sheets of um, um, of a, a plastic product similar to a geo membrane and then weld it at uh, several places at uh, along the length like this these uh, plastic sheets they are ultrasonically welded and uh, then um, the entire thing comes in a in a um, collapsed form in small uh, rolls and uh, once they are taken to this site they can be expanded and once uh, you expand them um, these pockets form and um, these pockets can be filled with um, soil um, to um, to construct um, a road base or uh, several other things the expanded um, um, geo cell is uh, something like this when the geo cells first came into the market this uh, the geo cells are made of um, um, a plain uh, plastic sheets like uh, very similar to a geo, mem geo membrane without any openings or without any uh, rough surface and now the more recent uh, geo cells uh, they are made with um, either a corrugated surface so that they have a very good interaction with the uh, with the infill soil or with some openings so that the geo cell layer can also act as a drainage layer because um, uh, this once um, um, this um, the geo cell is made of um, um, made of a plastic sheet without any openings it cannot allow the water to flow the water can only go down and uh, below that below the geo cell we should have some uh, geotextile or something that, that can act as a as a drainage layer and some of the advantages that we have with the geo cells these are easy to transport because um, they come in a collapsed form and um, then they do not occupy much volume and uh, once um, uh, these geo cells are taken to the site and expanded um, we can cover very large area sometimes um, even as wide as about 4 meters wide and 10 meters long and once it is in a collapsed form um, it may not occupy much, uh, much uh, space it might uh, be as compact as just a laptop bag and um, we can use any fill material um, in these uh, geo cells and um, because of the all round confinement that is given to the soil um, it forms a semi rigid layer providing a very stiff support. Uh, to the um, uh, to the loads that we apply and uh, because of the semi rigid uh, nature of the layer it can uh, spread the load over a very wide area thus uh, reducing the the pressures that are transmitted into the subgrade and uh, because of that we have uh, very good um, 
um, um, load dispersion and uh, reduce the settlements and reduce the um, uh, bearing capacity failures in the in the foundation soil. And uh, this uh, geocell layer, it can also provide excellent uh, support even under cyclic loading. For example, under um, railway tracks or under high speed um, um, high speed um, highways and so on. And some of the typical applications, um, the um, apart from the load carrying um, functions, it can also be used as a erosion control product um, or for construction of steep slopes and retaining walls. And as a sub base support, it is a very excellent product. It can be used in road bases or it can be used in the railway tracks or it can be used for construction of the container yards and so on. And here we see the uh, the use of um, uh, geocell for construction of an unpaved road in a dairy, dairy factory and uh, the ground is prepared on this left hand side preparation of the ground by leveling it and uh, we can uh, um, now lay this uh, geo, um, the geocell and then uh, whenever um, uh, there is a continuation of the geocell we staple them so that they are joined together and here the geocells are filled with aggregates and um, then once it is filled with aggregate we can do the compaction using our rollers and then uh, the entire surface it can be just simply left as it is uh, without any treatment because of the surface conf because of the confinement that is given by the geo cell um, the, um, the soil is, um, is preserved and uh, the um, and that road surface can um, um, can have very good integrity and the main advantage with the geo cells is that at a very low confining pressure it provides excellent um, excellent support excellent lateral support and because of that the soil behaves like a very stiff material we know that when there is a good confinement the soil can be very very strong and that's exactly what a geo cell um, does and here we see the application of a a geo cell for construction of a steep slope or for stabilizing a steep slope and here we see the construction of a very steep slope using um, geo cell uh, geo cells and the and uh, because of the uh, the open um, um, uh, geo cell pockets we can uh, promote the vegetation uh, through these uh, open pockets and once these uh, the vegetation takes root the entire thing uh, could be a green color um, surface and we will not even see the, um, the that uh, the geo cells are applied for construction of this slope. And here you see some of the students at IIT Madras standing on a, a geo cell supported soil which is about one and a half meters um, tall. And here you, you notice that these geo cells are made of um, um, made with um, um, open structure um, the with the number of um, openings in the geo cell that is to promote a good interaction between the soil inside the, um, the uh, inside the different pockets and uh, here we see the application of a geo cell for uh, treatment of a container yard uh, these container yards typically they have very heavy loads because of the movement of the of these um, the container vehicles and these are um, uh, usually constructed on soft marine clays near the shore and um, so the problems are compounded. We have very heavy loads but at the same time we have very soft support, very soft uh, subgrade soil and the result is like this. So in fact this particular container yard in Chennai was uh, built on reclaimed land and um, the thickness of the, of the, um, of the soil that is placed is about one and a half to two meters. Very um, very thick um, 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 soil layer was placed, and then that was stabilized by good compaction. And then on top of that, there was about 500 millimeters thick pavement layer in the form of uh, boulders, then aggregates, and then the um, the sand cement mix and so on. In spite of that, the uh, the deformations that are taking place in the, in the soft clay they get reflected back and we have a typical mud wave formation and once uh, these mud waves uh, form 
or they get reflected back at the at the surface uh, there is a problem because all these uh, container vehicles they are very heavy and um, it is also da dangerous for them to uh, to move on a on a highly regular um, surface because uh, there is a danger for these uh, container uh, containers to swing uh, um, at a very fast rate and um, so these uh, container yards they should be as smooth as possible and as flat as possible and uh, this particular uh, container yard was uh, repaired by placing a layer of uh, geocell at the top and here we see the uh, the construction process first we lay a layer of geotextile that can act as a separator and then uh, later it was uh, the geocell was uh, was placed and it is filled with um, aggregate and uh, this uh, constructed um, surface is actually it is um, absolutely uh, flat and uh, these are the photographs taken 3 years after the geocell treatment of the same area where um, we have seen um, these mud waves that were formed and um, is actually the entire uh, uh, yard is flat and um, the, um, uh, that, uh, um, that allows the free movement of the of these uh, container vehicles and another problem with the uh, with the uneven ground is um, if these uh, containers they are stacked on an uneven ground they they tend to get damaged by because of the bending action and uh, so we need a flat support so that these uh, containers also they do not get damaged and uh, here we see some close ups of these um, this container yard that was treated with uh, with a geocell except for uh, some damage um, in the form of, um, of um, uh, chipped paver blocks there is uh, no other damage and uh, this entire um, uh, thing was um, it has become so successful that similar designs are employed um, in um, in many other uh, container yards using the geo cells for um, for reconstruction of these um, of these container yards so basically um, in spite of uh, constructing uh, this, this um, container yard in an extremely uh, soft soil we are able to provide a good surface um, because uh, because the entire um, uh, geo cell layer it was uh, it acted as a single layer and also as a semi rigid layer and uh, because of that uh, the surface was very good and in fact in um, in some neighboring area they had done with 150 millimeters thick uh, concrete layer reinforced concrete layer but unfortunately uh, the reinforced concrete did not last for more than 2 years it started cracking and then uh, because of the the uh, marine environment the steel started corroding and uh, the entire area could not be used uh, because of the corrosion of the steel and because of excessive cracking of the reinforced concrete whereas uh, this uh, uh, the geo cell being a polymeric product it was highly stable and it is able to hold the soil together some of the um, the um, erosion control um, products um, are um, are shown here the actually these are uh, this is a crimped mesh the uh, to uh, once it is uh, spread on the ground it slows down the um, the flow of water and um, it prevents the uh, the erosion of soil because it uh, once uh, it confines the soil to some extent then it uh, slows down uh, the, fl um, the the speed of uh, rain water on a slope and once the rain water uh, the surface runoff is slowed down its erosion potential is reduced and uh, then um, the soil is uh, more stable and another um, um, type of um, geosynthetics um, they are geocomposites we have several varieties of geocomposites in fact the uh, the prefabricated vertical drain is an example of a, of a of a geocomposite wherein we use a geotextile as an outer filter and inner core could be a geonet 
or uh, some other form of a corrugated uh, mm, the plastic sheet. So, that is uh, one example of a of a um, geocomposite and the other examples are uh, shown here. These are combinations of a geotextile and a geogrid. The, they, they take advantage of the, uh, the uh, specific pro properties of um, both the materials that are there like a geotextile. It has excellent um, separation properties and also excellent uh, filter properties whereas, the geogrid can have excellent strength and stiffness. So, if you combine both of them they provide um, the reinforcement action, they, they can provide drainage action, they can provide filter action and um, here on the left hand side we see another uh, um, product that is a combination of a geotextile and a geogrid. Or, um, and uh, these are all um, in fact uh, this product it uh, produces a very high force of the order of 200 kilo Newton per meter at a very low strain of uh, less than 4 percent. So, that is um, how strong the geosynthetics can be depending on the manufacturing process and depending on the materials that we use um, they can um, be made to provide um, multiple functions. And there are um, several other um, um, geo composites or um, what are known as geo others, uh, geo drains. A uh, geo drain is uh, nothing but a uh, but a plastic pipe with uh, perforations, and uh, once they are buried in the in the soil, they can um, they can act as drains because uh, through the uh, through these perforations in the pipe, the rainwater or um, uh, the the water in the soil can in, can be collected, and um, then it can be um, it can flow through the pipe and gets collected in a in some place um, and um, it can be either pumped out or if we have any um, any so any source of um, water we can just lead all this rain water into some place and we have number of uh, varieties of lightweight fills especially the uh, the lightweight fills made of um, polystyrene expanded polystyrene and so on and we have uh, uh, geo pipes which is uh, which are very similar to geo drains and then we have geo textile bags one application that I have already shown earlier for the construction of uh, um, of uh, coastal erosion protection structures and uh, these geo bags they can be used uh, as soil encapsulation especially um, say if you are constructing in a very soft soil we can use a very large geo bags and put in aggregate or soil and encapsulate the soil and the entire um, thing can act as a rigid mat and uh, the gabions they are um, once again um, they can be categorized as uh, geo others and these gabions they can be either uh, made of steel wire meshes or they can be made of uh, rope nets and so on and the geosynthetic NK stone columns uh, these um, are um, of more recent origin and they are used um, for um, for forming stiff columns in soft clays and of course there are uh, so many other uh, um, uh, possibilities these are left to the imagination of engineers and every uh, few months or few years we see a new application of um, uh, geosynthetics in a very innovative manner for um, for construction in difficult soil conditions so actually these are some examples of the uh, the geo boards or drainage boards that are used behind retaining walls is so actually here we have um, a geotextile either a woven or a non woven geotextile and then we have a um, we have a, a punched plastic sheet more like an egg carton that can act as a drainage layer and if uh, this is uh, fixed behind the retaining wall it can act as an excellent drain along the along the length of the along the height of the retaining wall and in place of um, um, in place of a drainage layer that is the made by uh, using aggregate very good quality aggregate we can just simply stick one of these drainage boards uh, behind the retaining wall to act as a drain and we have number of um, um, 
lightweight fills and these lightweight fills if they are made of um, um, small beads of polystyrene they can also be um, made to act as good uh, drainage medium and here we see an example of, of a lightweight fill um, made uh, by bonding polystyrene beads and the typical uh, unit weight of these, um, these um, um, lightweight materials is of the order of 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 kilo newtons per cubic meter. Comparatively uh, the, um, the weight of a um, soil, typical soil could be anywhere from 18 to 20 kilo newtons per cubic meter and even the weight of um, fly ash could be of the order of 8 to 9 kilo newtons per cubic meter. So you just imagine using um, these um, lightweight fills for as a landfill material or for construction of road bases and so on, absolutely they will not result in any settlements and, um, and then these uh, lightweight fills could be made of um, stiff um, um, styrofoam um, or styrofoam or polystyrene um, um, blocks uh, for uh, construction of road bases and so on or for embankments and uh, so on. And here uh, we see the example of uh, gabions and these gabions are uh, nothing but baskets made of either uh, uh, steel wires, uh, steel wire uh, meshes or uh, rope net meshes and here in this particular case we have the rope net meshes and these gabions <coughs> they are packed with stones or um, they are filled with um, uh, geotextile um, bags filled with sand to act as, um, as um, to act as sea walls or as groin structures or uh, to prevent um, to act as uh, breakwaters and so on. And here we see an example of a sea wall that is built using uh, rope net gabions filled with stones. And here we see an example of uh, the gabion structures. Um, for um, um, for breaking the um, the in the sea waves, and um, the is actually this um, instead of filling these gabions with uh, stones, uh, we fill them. Um, this was part of um, some research work going on at IIT Madras. Here we have these um, uh, these um, geo bags that are filled with beach sand that is readily available at the place uh, where we need to protect the, the beach and these are um, uh, these um, bags are filled inside these uh, rope net gabions and then uh, we close them and we, um, we tie up um, several of these uh, rope net gabions together and uh, the weight of each of these, uh, sand, these sandbags is hardly about 20 kgs. So they can be easily handled by um, um, by people and uh, they once they are brought and assembled in a geo bag each um, 1 cubic meter of um, rope net gabion uh, can accommodate about 50 cases of these, uh, these geo bags. That means that the weight of each of these uh, rope net gabion could be as high as 1000 cases or 1 ton and uh, once all these um, similar bags they are tied up together their combined mass could be very, very large and they can be easily used uh, for coastal protection works. And here we see the um, um, a small breakwater which is able to withstand about one and a half meters um, wave that is uh, shown here. And uh, there are um, other products that are made of um, um, in f um, uh, used rubber tires and other industrial waste products which are all um, cut to pieces and bounded uh, together so that uh, we provide uh, some um, thick uh, mass or some thick uh, medium that is highly porous and uh, slightly compressible so that it can act as a cushion and also it acts, it can act as a drainage medium and uh, behind the retaining walls if these are applied they can uh, be made to act as, um, um, as a drainage medium or they can also be, um, be employed to reduce lateral earth pressures in the soil by promoting some 
uh, yielding in the soil like we know that when the soil expands laterally the, um, the lateral earth pressures reduce and that concept is called as a controlled yielding and we will see the concept of um, uh, the controlled yielding and how these geosynthetics can be employed in some other lecture later on. And uh, one recent application of uh, geosynthetics is in the form of NK stone columns. The stone columns are, uh, are traditionally employed by geotechnical engineers for supporting the flexible structures like oil storage tanks or uh, roadway embankments and so on. And uh, uh, these stone columns if they are constructed in, in um, extremely soft clays, the main problem is it is difficult to form the stone column and there is not sufficient confinement given by surrounding the soft clay because of that uh, the, uh, the column may not develop adequate, um, um, adequate strength to support, the, to support the applied load. And uh, in most of these cases, these stone columns, they also act as excellent drainage mediums. But then um, when um, there is a um, extremely soft clay all around uh, the stone column, uh, the soft clay can contaminate the stone column and the stone column aggregate and in the process it can clog all the openings in the, in the stone column. And once uh, these, um, uh, these aggregate materials uh, which are, uh, uh, which have very good uh, shear strength um, by their own, but once they are contaminated they will have very highly lubricate surfaces resulting in loss of um, shear strength of this aggregate. And uh, one, so these uh, problems can be easily overcome by um, encasing uh, this stone column uh, by a geosynthetic in the form of a geotextile or a geocomposite and so on. And the advantages that we gain is we provide some additional confinement to the stone column and we prevent the contamination of the stone column material by the surrounding clays and it is more easy to form the stone column because many times it is very difficult to form the stone column in an extremely soft clay having a, a um, undrained cohesive strength less than about uh, 10 kPa that could typically happen in marine clays and so on. In all such cases we can um, um, easily construct the stone column by encasing them um, inside a geotextile, um, geotextile tube. And here we see an example um, of, um, of a geotextile column, a geotextile um, reinforced the sand column and on the left hand side we see how it is formed. We drive an open tube, a pipe into the soil either by means of vibration or um, by water jet. Once um, this open tube is lowered to the desired depth, we, um, we lower a tube of um, geotextile and then we can fill it with, sorry, then we can um, fill it with, um, so with soil either sand or, um, or a coarse uh, material like gravel or aggregate and then we can compact it by means of vibration when this, um, when this tube is uh, taken out, it can be vibrated uh, to compact the soil. And once uh, the tube is taken out, we have this uh, geosynthetic encased um, column, either stone column or a sand column. And uh, these are um, used for uh, constructing in um, extremely soft clays. For example, the Airbus A380 factory in Germany was supported on the stone columns um, formed in this process in this um, using this technique. And here we see um, an encased stone column using a geogrid. It's actually when geogrids uh, can be used because they have very high tensile strength and they can provide very good confinement. And uh, in areas where uh, we do not anticipate any contamination of the stone column material by soft clays, we can use a geogrid. And here we see some uh, test data um, from laboratory tests on um, encased stone columns. The pressure settlement data of the soft clay is like this. 
the strength of the soft clay is of the order of um, about um, 3 to 5 kp a kilopascals because uh, this was uh, this soil was prepared at a consistency very close to liquid limit so that there is a uniform um, um, uniform consistency of the soft clay and um, when the stone columns were uh, constructed this is um, how the pressure settlement uh, behavior is uh, the uh, the soft clay it failed at a very low pressure of the order of uh, 10 to 15 uh, kilopascals and uh, by inserting stone columns so osc stands for ordinary stone column of 50 75 100 mm um, the uh, the pressure capacity has increased to nearly 50 kpa and all these stone columns they had um, similar um, pressure settlement data and when this uh, the same stone columns were encased in a in a geotextile ge geotextile column this is how they they performed the uh, 50 mm column they had very high strength and the pressure as much as 400 kpa could be applied see the pressure on unreinforced stone column was um, hardly 15 kilopascals and when um, the stone column was built using aggregate the pressure could be increased about 50 kpa and uh, when the stone column is um, encased in a geotextile then in fact this non woven geotextile um, it has very low strength of the about uh, 20 or 25 kilo newtons per meter uh, the uh, the uh, the compressive um, pressure of nearly 400 kpa could be applied and more importantly if you look at the slope of these graphs the slope represents the um, the stiffness or the ability of the ground to support the loads without undergoing the settlements so for example even at a pressure of um, 100 kpa the settlement of the stone column treated ground is hardly about uh, 5 to 8 millimeters whereas um, at a pressure of um, we could not even apply a pressure of 100 kpa on um, an ordinary stone column so that is um, the uh, the advantage that we gain with these uh, stone columns and here interestingly as the stone column diameter increases like for example this is the response of uh, 50 uh, sorry uh, the uh, the 50 mm uh, diameter stone column and this is the response of 75 mm uh, diameter stone column this is uh, the other one is for 100 millimeters this is uh, is actually as the diameter of the stone column increases the influence of the geotextile reduces the the uh, the geosynthetic reduces because as the diameter is increasing the um, the hoop strains or the hoop um, tensile forces that are developed they reduce and because of the reduction in the hoop tensile force the confinement uh, the additional confinement that is given by the geosynthetic reduces and consequently as the diameter is uh, increased um, we need to use a stiffer uh, um, stiffer uh, confinement material and in this particular case all the three diameters of the stone columns they had uh, the uh, the same uh, geosynthetic material that produces the same hoop uh, tensile forces at a given strain and because of that we see the uh, the reduction in the in the stiffness and uh, the and the and the pressure capacity as the diameter increases and um, as actually in this particular case i have not shown the data but in some other lecture i will show you the data from uh, from test performed on different diameter of the stone columns and uh, with the different uh, stiffness of these uh, geosynthetics we see that we can increase the pressure to very large values and imagine using this type of stone columns in extremely soft clays we can uh, practically eliminate the settlements in fact uh, the normal stone columns they can reduce the settlements um, by about 40 to 50 percent uh, so if an untreated uh, ground undergoes settlement of uh, let us say some 3 to 400 uh, millimeters even by providing the stone columns at a very close spacing 
as much as uh, two times the at a spacing of about uh, let us say one and a half um, to two times the diameter the settlements reduce uh, to only about maybe two to, uh, to 300 uh, millimeters. But then if you use uh, these NK stone columns because they act almost like rigid piles the settlements um, are practically negligible and uh, because of the increased stiffness and increased strength we can increase the spacing of these uh, stone columns and that is the main advantage that we gain by, by using um, NK stone columns. And um, the most recent uh, um, technique is the NK stone columns that are um, becoming very popular not only in India um, even in other countries. So some of the latest trends that we have in the geosynthetics they are uh, the application of geosynthetics for vacuum consolidation of soft clays and then of course NK stone column and um, the electrokinetic uh, geosynthetics. In here we employ some copper wires along with the geotextiles or geogrids so that we can um, change the, um, the fundamental properties of um, the soft clays by polarizing the, by polarizing the soil. Okay, these um, techniques uh, we will see in, um, in uh, some future lectures. Thank you very much.